Fidelis Care offers quality, affordable health coverage for children and adults of all ages and at all stages of life. Quality health coverage, it's our mission. Call 1-888-FIDELIS or visit FidelisCare.org. Hello everybody and welcome to the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat. I'm Dave Yates. Every week at this time, we're going to take a look at our local college sports programs. We begin this week with the honor roll of local college athletes, brought to you by M&T Bank. At M&T Bank, we're listening, learning, and working hard to understand what's important to Western New York. It's what we've been doing since 1856. M&T Bank, understanding what's important. In at number three, Ex Alexandra Tahari helped lead the Roberts Wesleyan volleyball team to a 3-2 win over ECC foe Malloy College. Tahari had 19 kills and 18 digs, and the Red Hawks are now 5-4 in conference contests. At number two, Alex LaPointe from Fairport won three races for the Nazareth men's swim team in a dual meet with Alfred, winning the 200 IM, the 100 Butterfly, and the 100 Breaststroke. Naz beat Alfred in 11 of the 13 events. And topping this week's list, Joe Germanario has taken over a quarterback for Brockport and is getting the job done, throwing for 210 yards and a touchdown, while also running for a team-high 188 yards and two TDs. The Golden Eagles celebrated homecoming and beat Cortland State 21-19. It is time now for our local college spotlight athlete of the weekend we head to Brockport, where a student far from home has soared to great heights as a Golden Eagle. First, the good news about Brockport tennis player Sarah Mensa. She was recently named first team all Suniac. Her 16 wins in singles competition also earned her team rookie of the year and MVP. Now for the bad news. As an exchange student from Germany, her study abroad program is only good for one semester. So Sarah's time with the Golden Eagles has come to an end, but the award she will take home with her made it a season to remember. Oh, it's really an honor to get like, you know, that appreciation, which I never really got over there. Um, I really enjoyed the season, especially like I wasn't really expecting that I'd play against so tough girls, especially the numbers, uh, those singles one, single one players. And the ITA championship was like just like to get experience and I didn't know that I will make it that far so it's actually a great season right so far. Sarah really hit her stride at the ITA regional championships, becoming the only unseeded player to make it to the semifinals, and in the process knocked off four seeded players. It was a run that even surprised her a little. Especially like the first game where I was leading I think one set back, I was like okay that's it good experience but something just told me like you didn't just come here all the way from Europe to just get knocked out so there was something like I really enjoy playing it's a good feeling you don't have any pressure you're just experiencing everything so that was probably the reason why I made it so far. There are some major differences between the level of play in the United States and Europe that difference is mainly because of where they play. That we usually play in private clubs so the school's not really involved as it is here, like the combination of school and education, so you're a student athlete. It's different in Germany. Um, I think the standards are much higher because it's private clubs, so people can afford it to play and people will kind of pay for playing. So that's a kind of huge difference. Sarah's ability on the court didn't mean she wasn't going to embrace the team aspect of college athletics, and her doubles partner benefited from that. It's great playing with Sarah. I've never played with a um, with a player um, like her before. She's definitely got a lot of skill, and she's been a great mentor for me this season too. You really want to play. You're not gonna get scholarships, so you're just playing for yourself and try to improve yourself. So this was what I really wanted to try out because I could also play in a Division One or Division Two school, but. It's different, it's more like more pressure on that and everything, and it's more business, so that's what I really appreciated and liked and 
yeah, on a Division three school so far. Her decision to go from Berlin to Brockport was based largely on the academic offerings. It also helped that she had some familiar faces close by. So I choose them Brockport because they have indoor courts. Um, they have the same academic um, structure I do in Germany. Like I study like sport therapy and prevention. So it's basically like uh, exercise science. So that what that's really the reason why I came here. And for sure, like my parents have over all like all of the place relatives. <laughs> so. Uh, my aunt lives in Toronto, and my other family lives in New York City, so it's kind of a great combination to visit them when I have, like, holidays. Sarah's time at Brockport might have been short, but it certainly was memorable for her and the Golden Eagles. When we return, J.C. DeLass welcomes Nazareth College field hockey coach Tara Christensen into the coach's corner, and later on, Kim Bernson has our Scholar Athlete, brought to you by Dave. All that and more when the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat returns. As we head to break, here's a look at the Nazareth Athletes of the Week, brought to you by Nazareth College. As we come back from break, here's a look at the Geneseo Athletes of the Week, brought to you by SUNY Geneseo. Welcome back and thanks once again for joining us on the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat. I'm Dave Yates. Every week at this time, J.C. DeLass from WYSL Radio will help us get to know an area coach better with the Fidelis Care Coach's Corner. The Fidelis Care Coach's Corner is presented by Fidelis Care. Quality health coverage, it's our mission. This is JC DeLass with this week's Fidelis Care Coach's Corner. And this week we're joined by Tara Christensen, the women's field hockey coach at Nazareth College. Tara, you were recently named the first full-time field hockey coach here at Nazareth, but you certainly have plenty of head coaching experience. You used to be at CUCA and also down the road at St. John Fisher. How did that experience help you in this position now? Um, well, the field hockey team at Nazareth College, it is, you know, freshman class-wise, we have a big freshman class. Um, sophomore class is very large as well, so this team is younger. Developing the program, um, it's kind of a re-emergence of sorts. So with starting the program at St. John Fisher, you know, brand new team, young players, and then again, same thing at CUCA, brand new team, young players, recruiting, building from the beginning. Um, that's kind of what we're basing you know, many of our mindsets around heading into this fall between myself and Danielle, the assistant coach. So it's you know, building blocks, laying the foundation. Um, we're reestablishing you know, the Nazareth field hockey culture. I would imagine patience is a very yes. important part of what you do and how to be a successful coach in field hockey too. Yes. Uh, field hockey is a sport. It's um, there is a lot of gray area with the officiating. Uh, it's not you know so black and white like other sports. So patience, yes, whether you're on the sidelines coaching or on the field, um, but you know diligence as well, just like other sports. But you know commitment to you know the skills that are essential to the game. You know the pulls, the receptions, the block tackles. Um, just the building blocks that are going to make the players successful and, you know, mesh together as a team quickly. You mentioned gray areas. Yes. Field yes. hockey is definitely an acquired taste. What, do you, what would you do to change the sport to, to make it more popular and, and, and maybe bring more fans to the sport? Do you know, field hockey is actually the number three team sport in the world. And that's one of my favorite, you know, stats or quotes or, you know, just facts to surprise people with because you wouldn't know it because the game is still kind of emerging in North America. Um, you know, to develop the sport of field hockey, especially within the upstate New York area, and it's happening, um, but just starting at a younger age, similar to how soccer's 
ice hockey's lacrosse. You know, they have developmental programs that start with children as young as two and three. Um, we're actually starting to do that in the Rochester area. area. Um, you know, there's a club team that started, college coaches were mainly the ones heading it up. Um, just to grow the game, grow the sport, you know, put it out there more so the exposure is there and you never know who you're going to catch and maybe entice. I see, as you talked about, increase in junior programs. Yes. High schools in particular. Yes. In Section 5 in the Rochester area really become a, a much bigger sport and I would imagine that helps your cause yes. too. Yes, yes. Section 5, um, you know, in addition to Buffalo Section 6, Section 3, Utica, Syracuse area. Um, but Section 5 is a field hockey hotbed, um, especially right where we're located, Nazareth College. Um, you know, there's only two teams that are on the west side. So it is, you know, literally in our backyard as far as recruiting, able to draw players, um, and just, you know, educate and grow the game, um, which is important, developing that relationship. Thanks, Coach, and good luck this season. Thank you. And thank you for watching this week's Fidelis Care Coach's Corner. Kim Burnson is up next with our Scholar Athlete, and later on, basketball season is about to start. We'll preview the RIT Tigers. All that and a lot more when the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat returns. Before we go to break, here's a look at the RIT Athletes of the Week, brought to you by the Rochester Institute of Technology. As we come back from break, here's a look at the SUNY Brockport Athletes of the Week, brought to you by the College of Brockport. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat. I'm Kim Burnson. It's time now for our Scholar Athlete, brought to you by Dave, Digital Audio Visual Environments. Where can you go to get expert advice and installation on TVs, sound systems, and automation for your home, car, or business? Come see Dave. Digital Audio Visual Environments. Come see Dave.com. This week, our scholar athlete is Nazareth's Kelsey Milligan, a sophomore on the Golden Flyers volleyball team. Besides being a standout on the court, Kelsey is also a recipient of several scholarships, including a Nazareth Presidential Scholarship, the Zonta Scholarship, and the Kurt Kingsley Scholarship. She was named Athlete of the Week for Nazareth in September after being honored as MVP of the Golden Flyer Invitational. Kelsey is currently pursuing a physical therapy degree. For her work on the field and in the classroom, this week Kelsey Milligan is our honored as our scholar athlete. Brought to you by Dave, Digital Audio Visual Environments. Now with a look at our college calendar, here's Dave Yates. Here is our local college calendar for the week ahead. There's action this afternoon as the University of Rochester field hockey team hosts Utica College at 1 in their regular season finale. Tuesday has RIT Wrestling kicking off their season. They've got a meet against Niagara County Community College. That's at Clark Gym at 7 p.m. On Wednesday, Geneseo Field Hockey takes on SUNY New Paltz in a SUNYAC semifinal matchup at 2 o'clock. Friday is Hockey Night in Rochester. Nazareth hosts Manhattanville at 7. They also play Newman College on Saturday afternoon. There's also Geneseo Hockey on Friday night versus Cortland at Seven, and at the same time, Brockport Hockey is home against Oswego. Saturday, St. John Fisher football takes on Hartwick College at 1 p.m. And finally, on Friday and Saturday, there are a lot of tournaments to watch for. Empire 8 soccer, volleyball, and field hockey. The SUNYAC tournament semifinals and finals in soccer and volleyball as well. That is our college sports beat calendar. And now here's how some Section 5 alums are doing at colleges outside of Rochester. It's a segment we call Postcards from College. Josh Mack, formerly of Pittsford Menden, had a big day versus Rhode Island, running 11 times for 115 yards, including a 65-yard touchdown run and a 28-21 win. The Black Bears are now 4-3. Bishop Carney grad Ardell Brown has looked great the last two games for Seton Hill. Ardell had nine catches for 156 yards versus Gannon, and then last week five more receptions for 78 yards and a touchdown versus Mercyhurst. Santita Evanguizzi, formerly of Pittsburgh Sutherland, continues her excellent sophomore year at Syracuse, setting a season high with 14 kills and 20 points versus NC State. And Penfield's Katie Lembo had a strong showing at the Nuttycomb Wisconsin Invitational. In a race with some of the country's top runners, Katie placed 27th and second among the Providence women. Those 
are our postcards from college. Coming up next, our honor roll of teams, and later on, a sneak peek at a basketball team on the rise at RIT. All that when the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat continues. As we head to break, here's a look at the Roberts Wesleyan Athletes of the Week, brought to you by Roberts Wesleyan College. As we come back from break, here's a look at the St. John Fisher Athletes of the Week brought to you by St. John Fisher College. Welcome back. Thanks once again for joining us on the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat. I'm Dave Yates. Here is our honor roll of local college teams. We're going to start at number three, the Roberts Wesleyan Cross Country Teams, men and women, for winning their third straight ECC championships. Keith Pease was named Men's Cross Country Runner of the Year, and Menga Singh was named Women's Rookie Runner of the Year. At number two, Nazareth Women's Soccer beat number 16 Carnegie Mellon 1-0 for their eighth straight win and seventh straight shutout. For goalie Braden Dobles, it was her 25th career shutout. That's a new school record. And topping the list, Geneseo Women's Soccer. The Knights beat Plattsburgh 3-0 to clinch second seed in the Suniac Tourney and a first round bye. Geneseo is unbeaten in their last five games. And now it's time for our Spotlight Team of the Week. It's just the start of the basketball season and at RIT, Hall of Fame coach Bob McVeigh has 13 returning players and 34 years of experience, all part of a winning formula. Here's Kim Burnson. From that, also defending uh, screens. Uh, we haven't really gone into that. Uh, we it's are a marathon, not a sprint. No one knows that better than RIT men's basketball coach Bob McVean. In his 34 seasons with the Tigers, Coach McVean has seen the game evolve in his time with the program. The road to success starts in the offseason. I think you can really get very stressed out and look too far ahead. And so as we talk about that each day, I, from that perspective, uh, then they, they're just working to get better each day. We got them up at 7 o'clock, uh, three days preseason. Uh, we have a strength trainer and they really bought into that. And uh, the game is changing. The uh, game is a much more physical game, whether we're talking the pros, to Division One, to Division Three, And that fitness and that strength level is very paramount. Even with early wake-up times and tougher strength training, there's no problem getting players to buy in. Well, I think one of the things, uh, we had a number of players stay up here this summer, and they really put their time in and working, especially in the weight room and, and getting all over. Um, and we just, we just really emphasize that every day, that we're trying to make it a better practice or better day than it was uh, the day before. Well, we're a young team, so we came back with a lot of the same players, and we've all been working in the gym in the off season, and I feel like we're a lot better than we were last year, shooting wise. You know, we're faster, we're stronger. We got a strength conditioning coach we've been, we've been working with, and you know, we're a lot better than last year. We had 7 a.m. lifts, and I think that built like a lot of camaraderie and group activity, and I think like just being with each other and watching each other work hard just pushes each other a lot. So I think you'll see a lot of that on the floor this year. Horde, a former Liberty League Rookie of the Year, led the team in assists and scoring, averaging 21 points per game last season. He's now become a team leader in his junior year. AJ, you came into this program and got started on a pretty high level. How do you keep up in yourself every season? Uh, I think just setting my goals high. Coaches allow me to play my game within the system. And I think as each year comes, the game becomes a little bit easier. You know each other a lot better. So just constantly working on improving and fixing the little nuances in my game every year. AJ obviously has proven first team um, all conference, 21 a game. Mitch is one of the leading three points uh, percentage scorers in the country. Do you ever feel like you're the go-to guy in clutch situations and is there any pressure there? Uh, no pressure there, but yeah, definitely I feel like that's a, a role I've stepped into and I've been able to do that with the help of my teammates and my coaching staff. So it's kind of something that I, I take pride in being able to help us get in good situations like that. 
Last season, RIT won 12 games and went 8-8 eight and eight in Liberty League play. Now, with a little more experience, the Tigers are ready to set the bar higher this year. We have a tough league, so I mean, every game we have to come and bring it. And I, I really can't circle one individually, but we really have to come here every game and just make it our own and win it. We have some very good depth, and, and also, um, from a standpoint, we are going to play very much up-tempo. I don't want to say too much right now, but we're going to uh, be picking up full court and we're going to, it's going to be a quicker game because we have some depth, especially with the quickness, and the game has changed from that as well. What are the expectations for this season? Win a championship. Just wanting to win a championship. Now you got some guys like me and Mitch who've been in the program for a while and coaches been here for a long time. It'll be the first time to hang a banner in the Liberty League for the school, so I think that's something that motivates you every day. Though team leaders have high hopes for the season, Coach McVean wants them to remember this mantra. Game at a time. <laughs> but this conference that we're in, especially when we get to that in January and February, it is really uh, a conference. Last year, there were seven teams out of nine within getting into the playoffs in the last week. So that shows you two years ago, there were four of us tied for second place. So you can see it's really competitive. One of the themes that we have this year is, and I know it's a cliche, um, but a day at a time, whether we're going practice-wise and it's a five-month season, or whether we're going game to game. I know the guys like to talk about championships. I think those championships will come uh, if you lead up to that with a proper pre preparation. I'm Kim Burnson with the Fidelis Care College Sports Beat. He gets the chance to go back in. It's one on one. Rotate this way around. From the end line, uh, you go to that line. From the end line to that line, and vice versa. All right? That's all the drill is. Well, thanks everybody for watching. And a special thanks to our sponsors, including Fidelis Care, for making the College Sports Beat possible. We'll see you here next week.